attorney, and I'm here for one more question. Well, first we have to look at what the initial determination was and where we're going. So in order for custody to be reversed, a modification has to be filed. So initially, when the court is de deciding who is going to have what time with the child, whether it's going to be 50-50, whether it's going to be every other weekend, whether it's going to be some sort of variation in between, the court looks at what is in the best interest of the child. And the court looks at certain things like who is going to stick to a time-sharing schedule? Is there drugs involved? Is there alcohol involved? Who knows the child more? Is there a routine? Certain factors like who's gonna be parenting the child? Are mom and dad working too much and the child's always in daycare or always with a grandparent? A lot of factors go into what is that initial determination. In order to come back and change custody, to change time-sharing, there has to be a modification filed. And when you file a modification, you're basically telling the court there has been a substantial and unanticipated change of circumstances that has occurred since the final judgment, whether it be six months ago, a year and a half ago, five years ago, whenever that initial determination was, there is now a change in circumstances. And when you're doing that, you're basically trying to argue to the court that the child has been negatively affected by something that's going on at the other parent's house such as they've had their electricity cut off, they've had no water, uh, running water, the front yard is overgrown, the child is um, missing school. Something has happened that has negatively affected the child. And if you can show that, then the court looks and determines whether that scenario that happened initially is no longer in the best interest of the child we now need to move on. It is a difficult um, task in order to change the time sharing or change custody, especially from when one parent had the full amount of the time and the parent, the other parent only has every other weekend and then to flip flop it where the parent only has every other weekend is now going to get the full majority of the time and the parent who had the majority of the time only has every other weekend, that's a huge task to overcome. However, it does happen in the right set of circumstances, in the right facts in your case, then that can happen. But you also need to know that as a parent who does have the child the majority of the time and is taking care of the child and making sure that what needs to be done is getting done, the child is going to school, the child's not tardy, the child's grades are still good, um, the child's not a teenager who's running away. Um, as long as everything is the way that it's supposed to go, then you should also feel confident that you're not, that the other parent is not gonna be able to come in and take that away from you because you are doing what you are supposed to be doing and your child is actually thriving in that environment. It's a good thing to know and to have that comfort but it's also good to know that if things are not the way that they're supposed to be going, that you can change them and that you can file that modification. Well, first and foremost, the answer is no. If you're, the other parent has visitation and you've decided, I don't want to give visitation over because the other parent's not paying child support or because I really wanted to do something with the child this weekend, like go to a family reunion or head to the beach, there really is no good answer or reason why you should deny a visitation. If you do, that parent, all they have to do is file a motion for contempt. And at the hearing on a motion for contempt, the parent just has to show that there is a court order that says what the visitation schedule is and that during this specific time period, you denied them that visitation. And according to Florida statute, the court has to give up make up time sharing or make up visitation. So if you denied the parent three days and two overnights, then the court is supposed to give that parent back three days and two overnights. You might also be responsible for paying other parents attorney's fees and that would be bad. Now with that being said though, there are some reasons why you may deny visitation. If um, the Department of Children and Families gets called 
and the Department of Children and Families says, do not give the child over to the other parent. We have an investigation going on or if criminal charges are pressed against the other parent and there is a no contact order, then of course you wanna follow those directions from the Department of Children and Families or law enforcement um, that says no contact with the other parent. If you are going to deny visitation to the other parent, you wanna make sure you have a good reason. If you feel that there is any type of sexual misconduct, then you're gonna to want to get other agencies involved to make sure that if the other parent does file a motion for contempt, you are prepared and ready to defend it. I hope that answered your question and I look forward to talking to you next time. Have a good day. Thank you.